here. I'm first. Oh, you're gonna <laughs> For my first sermon today. <laughs> Welcome. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. He has risen. He has risen indeed. He has. We are here to celebrate today, and we have some special music for you. So I'm just going to turn it straight over to them. Randy's group called Tribute is going to open up for us today. Joy in my soul, cause I knew my Lord had control. He had control. Well, I knew I was walking in the light, cause I'd been on my knees in the night, and prayed till the Lord gave a sign, and now I'm feeling mighty fine. Yes, I'm feeling, feeling mighty feeling fine. Mighty fine. Yes, I'm feeling fine. I've got heaven, heaven on my mind. Heaven on my mind. Heaven on my mind. Don't you know oh, I want to go, I want to go, yes I want to go, where the milk and honey flow, milk and honey flow. Milk and honey flow. there's a light that, shines, that always shines, light that shines down inside, inside this heart, this heart is mine. mine, I've got heaven, heaven, heaven on my mind, and now I'm feeling mighty fine, yes I'm feeling, feeling mighty fine, yes I'm feeling fine, I've got heaven, heaven on my mind, heaven on my mind. Heaven on my mind. Heaven on my mind. Don't Fine. Yes, I'm feeling, I'm feeling mighty fine. I'm feeling mighty fine. Thank you. Come back next week. I'm feeling mighty fine. Hey, here comes one more. I'm gonna ride the chariot in the morning, Lord. Ride, ride the chariot in the morning, Lord. I'm getting ready, I'm getting ready for the judgment day, my Lord, my Lord. Are you ready, my brother? Oh yes, ready for the journey. Oh yes, wanna meet your maker? I'm waiting for the chariot cause I'm ready to go I'm gonna ride, ride the chariot in the morning, Lord Ride, ride the chariot in the morning, Lord I'm getting ready, I'm getting ready for the judgment day My Lord, my Lord I never will forget that day Riding the chariot to see my Lord when all my sins were taken away, right in the chariot to see my Lord. I'm gonna ride, ride the chariot in the morning, Lord. Ride, ride the chariot in the morning, Lord. I'm getting ready, I'm getting ready for the judgment day, my Lord, my Lord. Ride the chariot in the morning, Lord. Ride the chariot in the morning. I'm going to tell you about the Oops, well, wrong, wrong one, I'm sorry. <laughs> Next week. <laughs> it's a song we never rehearsed. Next week. <laughs> but it is your well, well, but you yeah. get to start. I do get to start, yeah. Just right. like you did the last one. Right. right. <laughs> well, when I'm down, when I'm down, when I'm down, when down, I'm down, when I'm down, when my heart is filled with fear and doubt, when I live 
lift up my head, then he lifts up my heart, and my troubles just all roll away. Roll away, roll away, roll away. Troubles all the way, roll away, roll away, roll away. Troubles all the way, roll away. For when I lift up my head, then he lifts up my heart, and my troubles just all roll away. Now I can't see the sun with my head to the ground. The tears in my vision and weigh my heart down. But I found the secret that now when I knelt to pray. When I lift up my head, then he lifts up my heart. And my troubles just all roll away. Roll away, roll away. Troubles all the way, roll away. I lift up my head, he lifts up my heart, and my troubles just all roll away. Roll away, Lord, troubles all away, Lord. Roll away, Lord, troubles all away, Lord. For when I lift up my head, he lifts up my heart, and my troubles just all roll away. Roll away, my troubles. Just all roll away, roll away, roll away, roll away, roll away, roll away. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm in the traffic jam. I'm getting here. <laughs> Thank you again, Tribute. That was a wonderful way to open up our Easter service, right? Well, again, thank you for being here this morning with us. We are proud that you're here to celebrate with us. We would love to know that you're here. So there's a little black book somewhere on that row. If you'll just fill that out, we'd appreciate it. If you're watching online, we'd love to know you're out there watching too. Just say hi or click on the little like button for us. Also, we are... A Church of Prayer. In the front of your chair back, you'll see a prayer card. If there's something that's weighing heavy on your heart this morning or someone, um, maybe a praise, fill out that card and drop it in that silver box back there in the back of the room and we will be lifting you up in prayer all this whole week. And then join us on Wednesday night for our midweek prayer service. We meet every week at six o'clock and we go over and pray over each and every one of these prayer requests. We'd love to have you join us for that, that service. It really is a, a, a wonderful experience. The Holy Spirit shows up every Wednesday night for us. So join us every Wednesday night for that. Also, we are still doing our water drive for uh, Hacienda Los Arcos. Uh, it's, getting, it's getting hot. We have our first 90 degree day today, they say. Maybe 100 by Tuesday. One extreme to the other, right? <laughs> so, bring some water in so we have that ready when we have. Also, we, our Community Connect meets here every Thursday. If you don't know what that is, it's just a great time. A bunch of ladies meet back here in the back, and they play games. Uh, they go to movies. They ha go have lunch. Denny's. Denny's. At Denny's. I think that's every day, right? Denny's. Yeah. Denny's it's Denny's this week. So, they'll be meeting at Denny's at 1030 this week. But if you know someone that's just looking for something to do, have them join us. They don't have to be part of our church. They can just be somebody in the community. We would love to have them. Uh, the last couple of weeks, we've had a big crowd back there. We may have to get another table or two out. So join us them on Tuesdays at 1030 for that. Check your bulletin for the different Bible studies that are going on. We have four or five going. So just check that. Do what? Thursday. Did I say? Oh, Tuesday. Thursday. 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 Uh, check for the Bible study, see if there's one there that fits your needs. Also, I think, I don't, I think that's all of them. Yes. <laughs> I can't remember what the slides are. Black book. We did the black book. Uh, it's time for our offering. So uh, there's little envelopes in the back of your chair. If you want to use those, you can just drop it in the silver box back there in the back. If you're online, you can go to our webpage and all the different ways to give there. And we would like to pray for this offering and for all those that God has called to support this ministry. 
Father God, we thank you so much for this opportunity to come before you uh, on this special day. Just to say thank you. Thank you for all that you do for us, all that you provided for us, uh, and for Jesus this morning. We thank you, and we just thank you for this opportunity to help support this ministry and spread the word of what Easter is all about in our community. We thank you for those that you have called to support this ministry. We ask that you bless them and continue to show them that you are the great provider. Father God, we thank you for always knowing what we need before we even know it ourselves. Father God, we ask that you bless this offering. Give us wisdom and courage to use it in ways that will build your kingdom and follow your plan, not ours. It's in your precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please, church, stand with us.
sing a song They called him Jesus He came to love Heal and forgive He lived and died to buy my bone An empty grave is there through my Savior Sing this with us Because He This morning you should have got a little container like this it has a, a cellophane top on it that you'll pull back and get to the wafer that represents the body of Christ and then pull back the foil and you'll get to the juice that represents the blood of Christ we do this every Sunday but it's really special today you know when we uh, prepare for these things to say these words that God instructs us to say. You have all these things all typed out. 
And then you wake up on Sunday morning and God says, no, you're going to say this. And that's kind of the way it works. So one of my favorite stories of the resurrection is afterwards, when uh, after Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary, the mother of James, they, they were witnesses to an empty tomb. And they went back and told the apostles. And Luke recalls this. And he said, but they did not believe the women because their words seemed to be like nonsense. And Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. And bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves. And he went away wondering to himself what had happened. But here's the really cool part of the story. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emos, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. And as they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. But they were kept from recognizing him. They were leaving Jerusalem. They had been there for a Passover. And they saw the Lord crucified and died. And they were reflecting on these things. And Jesus asked them, Why are you discuss what are you discussing together as you walk along? And they stood, their faces downcast. And one of them named Cleopas asked him, Are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened in these, these here days? Happened there in these days. What things? Jesus asked. Jesus. <laughs> About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed, before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one that was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but they didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. And he said to them, Jesus did, how foolish you are. How slow to believe what all the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what is said in all the scriptures concerning himself. Jesus has a Bible study with these two guys right there at that time and says, you know all this. Weren't you there for the Passover? As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going farther. But they urged him strongly, stay with us for it's nearly evening. The day is almost over. And so he went in and stayed with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he disappeared from their sight. He broke bread, and they knew who he was immediately. You think maybe they were sitting on that hill when all them loaves and fish got multiplied? You know that they weren't at the Last Supper when he broke the bread, but when he breaks bread... Serious business happens. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? And I know there are people in our Sunday morning Bible study that feel that burning when we start doing that Bible study and all these things start tying together with the Old Testament and the New Testament. And it's like, oh my gosh, that's... Ah, ah, gets me going, I don't know. It, it, it lights my wet wood. So, I mean, this. They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. And there they found even those with them assembled together and saying, It is true, the Lord has risen. He has appeared to Simon. And then the two told what had happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. When he broke the bread. One of the main reasons why we do it every Sunday here and why it's so special today. Because on the night that Jesus was betrayed, he had taken that bread and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and he said, take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Mm -hmm. 
And in like manner, he took the cup. And he gave thanks. And he gave it to the disciples. And he said, take, this represents the blood of the new covenant of my blood shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Oh Lord, we weren't there, but our hearts burn when we hear your word. And when we look around us and see the things going on in our lives and in this world today, we know that you are the answer to everything. And so it is why we remember you, Father, as believers and followers. Father, we pray that we can be strong followers of, of Jesus, be his good disciples, share your word and your love with each other, break bread with each other, love each other, read your word, and be filled with your Holy Spirit. God, we thank you for this resurrection day and the celebration into eternity that it represents. In Jesus' name, amen. This is a new day, a day of celebration, for God has given us a new birth, a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus. He has rescued us from darkness. He has brought us out of despair, for in Him we have redemption, in Him we have mercy, in Him we have forgiveness. Today we stand in Christ, a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. Today we celebrate our Savior, our Deliverer, our Redeemer. Sin is conquered, death is defeated, the grave is empty, and Jesus is alive. This is a new day. This is Easter. This is Easter. He is risen. Risen indeed. In Luke chapter 24, verses 46 through 48, the risen Jesus gave his disciples a greater understanding of the resurrection when he told them this. This is what is written. The Christ will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance and forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name, to all nations, beginning in Jerusalem, you are witnesses of these things. Jesus foretold of his resurrection in John 16. Then one of the doubting witnesses, Thomas, <laughs> he says to him in verse 29, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not yet seen and yet have believed. Thank goodness those witnesses believed. Thank goodness they preached of Jesus. Thank goodness we listened and we're here today to celebrate this victory, our victory. Easter is about the victorious power that the resurrection brings. And that victory that we Share in Jesus. Jesus conquered evil. Jesus conquered sin. Jesus 
conquered death in his resurrection. We as believers, we get to share in that victory. We get to celebrate that victory this morning, and we get to live a life that's overcoming, this overcoming life of peace and redemption because we are overcomers in Jesus. Amen? Amen. It is real. Jesus has already won that battle. We get to take that victory walk every single day of our lives with him. That does not and cannot change. Regardless of what the world tells us or tries to show us, it cannot and will not change. This is our reality. This is our truth. That is, we live in this world and we have this future all because of Jesus. Jesus tells us this in John 16. He tells the disciples and us there will be tribulations. We will go through tribulations. We will go through troubles, even hard times. However, he wants us to also see that through him we can have peace, true peace, right here, right now. John 16, 33 says, I have told you these things, Jesus speaking, so that in me you will have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. <coughs> the interesting thing about that word overcome, that in this context, the way he uses it, the way John uses it, the way Jesus used it, overcome, victory, and conquer, all come from the same Greek word. So not only does Jesus overcome the world, he won the victory over the world. He conquered the world. That's what he's saying here. The world being the evil that's in the, that all around us. The sin that we see and we do. And the worldly deaths. That's what the world is that's being referred to here. John Cook, a New Testament scholar, gives this definition of the context of world as Jesus used it here. It is a way of life ordered apart from and contrary to God, ruled by Satan, and encompassing all mankind who are not in the family of God through faith in Jesus Christ. That's a pretty different... When we think of world, we think of a planet spinning around and around when the Bible talks about the world, it's talking about what Satan's in control of and how that affects us and what the end result of that is. Jesus has ever overcome this world. And we share that victory and that overcoming with him as he holds the world in his hands for us through our faith in Jesus. Through Jesus, we have victory. That's what we're celebrating this morning. Our victory. Turn to 1 John. And let's read about our victory there for a moment. We're going to start with, in chapter 5, verses 1 through 12. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone who loves the Father loves his child as well. This is how we know that we love the children of God, by loving God and carrying out his commandments. In fact, this is love for God, to keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for everyone born of God overcomes the world. There's that word again. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. He did not come by water only, but by water and blood. And it is in the Spirit who testifies, because the Spirit is the truth. For there are three that testify, the Spirit, the water, and the blood. 
and the three are in agreement. We accept human testimony, but God's testimony is greater because it is the testimony of God, which he gave, has given about his son. Whoever believes in, in the Son of God accepts this testimony. Whoever does not believe God, believe God has made him out of a liar because they have not believed the testimony God has given about his Son. And this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life. And, his son, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. That's our victory through Jesus. Everyone born of God overcomes the world. Whoever does has eternal life. Now this isn't the only passage that talks about the victory of Jesus. Our victory in Jesus. For those that believe in him. It's talked about throughout the New Testament. This victory in him and that how we get to take part in that victory. And how we get to be conquerors as well. Just like Jesus. Because of Jesus. John reminds us that everyone born of God overcomes the world. We have a victory in Jesus. That ultimate victory is what we're talk we usually go to when we think about things like this. In his death, burial, burial, and resurrection, what we are here this morning celebrating, that victory, our chance to be in heaven, Jesus has conquered the power of evil, of sin, of death. We have, but we can have peace and live a life that begins right now. We don't have to wait for that victory. We don't have to live in this world and let it beat us down. We don't have to wait to have our victory. When we give our lives to Christ and become a part of his family, we enter into this declared victory on a daily basis with our king who has already won. Do you know this living king? Do you know this victory that we're celebrating this morning? I mean truly know it. Do you know Jesus? That is the only way to be a part of God's family, of his family, to be part of this overcoming, to be part of this victory, is to know him, to love him, and to have a relationship with him. And we, when we do that, we receive that ultimate victory. That victory is eternal life. Eternal life in heaven. Eternity is a long time. Being a part of God's family in his presence, in the presence of Jesus, and with all the saints that have gone before us. But you must believe. You must believe. You must accept. You must have a relationship with him to receive it. Sometimes these special holidays are hard when we have people missing in our families, right? But we know because of this victory, we get to spend eternity with them, with Jesus, and with the Father. Do you know Jesus? That is an important question this morning. If not, maybe today is that perfect day for you to be introduced to him. I would be honored to do that. But let me ask that question in another way. Are you 100% sure, you believers, you Christians, that you're going to heaven? It's not a hard question. It's either a yes or a no. Can't be, I think so. I think I've been good enough. Because that could very easily be a no. You should be able to answer this question with an astounding yes. We don't have to wonder. We don't have to second guess. 
Yes. It should be our answer. If not, let's have a talk too. I want you to have that assurance because we're promised that assurance. We don't have to wonder if we've done enough good deeds, if I've done enough extra stuff to make up for my bad stuff. Did I kill enough sheep? <laughs> we have the assurance that if we believe in Jesus, if we really, that he really lived, that he really died on the cross for our sins, if we really believe that, and that on the third day, that first Easter, if we believe that he really rose again and conquered death, and if we repent and accept him as our Lord and Savior, then we should not only answer yes, but we should shout it Amen. and tell everyone we know about it. So I'm going to ask it again. Are you going to heaven? Yes. <laughs> that was very weak. Oh Are you going to heaven? Yes. There we go. We should do that. We should shout it. We should live it out. Because we have this assurance of a place in heaven just waiting for us if we claim our victory in Jesus. And if we live it out every single day. Live out that victory. Because when we do, it has some great benefits that we get to experience right here, right now, this morning, tomorrow morning, even next week. And that is what we call our current victory. God wants us to have this sense of peace, even now. He doesn't want us to wait for it. You know, okay, when you get, well, after you've done your 70, 80, 90, 100 years, then I'll let you have some rest. Then I'll let you have some peace. No, God wants us to have peace right now, in this lifetime, regardless of what we're going through. Living in this world where things are not always easy are not always good. God wants us to focus on our true future. But he also wants us to take that victory and start using it now. Start living it now. Paul gives us some great advice on how to do this in one of my favorite chapters or books, Philippians. So let's turn to Philippians 4. We're going to look at verses 4 through 9. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. He's not saying he will be near. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, the good and the bad, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God that transcends all understanding, it won't make sense. Don't try to make it make sense. Which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus. It'll put our focus on something better. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent and praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put into practice. And the God of peace will be with you. I just love those verses. There's so much comfort there. There's so much life lessons there. We can be experiencing God right now, every minute of our lives. Right here in the midst of whatever we're going through, rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. In any and every situation, know that Jesus is right by your side. Take the moment to feel his hand on your shoulder, guiding you, pulling you back, giving you a little nudge, loving you protecting you, providing for you. Our victory in Jesus is always present when we have a relationship with him. 
He walks with us, he guides us, and he comforts us. If you answered yes to knowing Jesus, claim that victory now. Live in that current victory. Claim it when you're going through good times and hard times. Because it's time to celebrate your victory. That's what's great about this morning. We get to celebrate the greatest victory we'll ever have in our lives. Jesus paying for our sins. Rising again on the third day to conquer death. Celebrate your victory. It's time you start living a life of hope instead of despair. It's time you start living a life of peace instead of hopelessness. It's time you start living the life of an overcomer, Amen. of a conqueror. And when you do, the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds because that victory is in Jesus. I know it's hard. Sometimes to see victory in our lives when we're going through those hard, rough patches. When we're surrounded by brokenness, surrounded by sin, by evil, and even our own failures. The victory that Jesus won is the reality. A reality that we can live in. But only if we take it if only we see it, if only we claim it, we will see the fullness of this victory when he returns. But for now, let's claim our victory and celebrate it. It's hard to explain how, how, can, it, how can he be with us when we can't see him? How can he help us when he's up there on that cloud floating around called heaven, right? Remember, it transcends all understanding. It doesn't have to make sense to us from a worldly perspective. It doesn't have to make sense. All of our human understanding will never understand God and how he works. But once you experience it, once you allow him to be your guide, and live inside you, <laughs> you'll know it. You'll feel it. You'll experience it. And it'll make things come into vision that you've never understood. I could never make it through that. I could never understand that. I could never feel like that in that situation. I could never have that much joy in this stat state of my life. But when we know Jesus, it transcends all understanding, that peace that we can find. Our lives can reflect that comfort and that peace that comes from knowing God, from knowing Jesus. People can see that in us when we're going through good and bad times, how we handle the good and how we handle the bad. People see that in us. Our lives reflect or can reflect that victory of Jesus. That victory is already here. We feel it in our hearts and our souls because we're connected to him. Because we're connected to him. We think about that. We're connected to him. And we know that even when life sucks, can you say that in church? <laughs> Even if life is really, really yucky, <laughs> what, lies, what lies ahead for us is so much better. What lies ahead for us is heaven. So even if this life is really, really yucky for those years that we're here, when you look at a scale of eternity, those few years don't even put a blimp on that line. So why are we focusing on what we're going through here when we can be focusing on what we're going to experience for eternity? When we do that, it makes anything bearable for the moment. And this life is just that, only a moment. 
only a moment on the scale of eternity. Jesus has overcome. Jesus has declared victory over evil, sin, and death. And he did that for us. That is the reality of life. That is the truth I want you to leave with this morning. We do not have to live our lives bound by sin and bound by the evil world around us. Does this mean that we live a life where everything is wonderful and we never have to struggle, we never sin, and we're never tempted? Of course not. <laughs> we do live here, right? The Holy Spirit is constantly revealing things to us when we have Jesus inside. When the Holy Spirit nudges us, that conscience that we, the world wants to say, oh, that's your, your conscience. That's God. That's the Holy Spirit. And it convicts us when, don't do that. Do this instead. I know you're hurting, but I love you. This is God speaking. You're strong. You can get through this. Look what's on the other side. I'm waiting for you. Just hang on. I'll love you through it. He convicts us and tells us when we need to ask for forgiveness. When we need to stop doing things. When we need to turn in a different direction. All so that we can have this new life given to us through what Jesus did for us on the cross. Because of that, we are no longer slaves to sin. But we are conquerors in this world. The story of Easter is a story of hope. Hope that sin does not have the final word. Not the final word in our lives or in this world. Hope that evil can be overcome by good. Hope that people can change. Hope that as people change, neighborhoods change. And then the world changes. Easter doesn't just give us hope for how we die, but gives us hope for how we live. Because he lives, we live. And that song not only talking about future live, present live. Our hope lies in the victory of Jesus. Our hope rose on the third day. Our hope is in that empty tomb. He is not there. He is risen. Our hope is only measured by how much God loves us. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. May you have a blessed day. Go celebrate your victory, your victory in Jesus, and share that with everyone you come in contact with, not just today, but every day. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for what today represents. We thank you for loving us so much that you would send your only son to die a horrible death and to take the, pay, the, the punishment for our sins. This morning as we celebrate his life, his death, and most importantly his resurrection. This morning I pray that we rise up in that victory with him. That we Go boldly into the world, claiming our victory, living in peace and understanding that only can come from you. Father God, I pray that if there's anyone here this morning or is hearing my voice that doesn't know who Jesus is, I pray that their heart is opened at this moment. Father God, I pray that they can feel your presence, that they can feel your love that they can feel the need for a Savior. Father God, we thank you. 
we thank you for the courage that each and every one of us have that has stepped up and claimed our victory. I pray that anyone that has not claimed it has someone close to them that will share that victory, that conversation with them and lead them there to the cross. Father God, we thank you again. And Jesus, oh Jesus, thank you for walking this walk with me. Thank you for protecting me when I didn't deserve to be protected. Thank you for walking this walk with us and protecting us when we didn't need to be worthy of being protected. Father God and Jesus, thank you for rescues. Thank you for salvation. Thank you for forgiveness. Thank you for an empty tomb. Jesus, it's in your Son. In your precious name we pray this morning. And the whole church said, Amen. Amen. Thank you, Tom. Please stand as we close. with us and I will stand upon your truth I will stand upon your truth all my days I'll live for you all my days I'll live for you Where you lead me, I will follow. 
trusting in what you say today is the day everybody. Spend the day with the people you love, and we'll see you next week. God bless.